Words have capacity to carry spiritual substance. People speak words and lives are transformed. People speak words and lives are destroyed. So impartation does not just happen in the positive realm of the spirit. It also happens in the negative. This morning, uh, I'm going to be bringing God's word to you along the line of the theme of the service, which is impartation. Impartation. Uh, the Lord put it on my heart that this Sunday should be a Sunday of impartation. And very briefly, I, I want to take you through the word of God on the subject of impartation. You know, there are words we throw around that some of us don't even know what, what these words are all about. And what some of us have is what I call a traditional religious understanding which is not necessarily true. You know, there is a way wrong information can be passed from hands to hands. And you it get passed to you and you end up believing it, but it was never true. What does the word impartation mean? Impartation means the bestowing transference or conveyance of spiritual gifts, abilities, and capacities. Take note of those three words. Transference, conveyors, or bestowing of spiritual gifts, abilities, and capacities from an individual to another. Listen to me. There are times that the impartation is directly from divinity to humanity. And there are times that the impartation is from humanity to humanity. I'm so sure at one time or the other, you must have had some people say, no, I just take it from God directly. But so many times, what God wants to give to you, he hides it in men. And when you miss those men, you miss God. So impartation can be from deity to humanity, and it can be from humanity to humanity. You know, when you see people talking about, you know what, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't just, you know, I just do God directly. It's pride. People have a way of hiding pride with religion. I serve God. That's why I don't come to church. You don't even get it because if you get it, you realize you're a part of a body. And one part of a body does not make a body. There is the depth, the density, and the intensity of God's presence and power that can only be felt and experienced when we come together as a body. So that solo mindset, low range mindset is evil. So, you know, that's the way I roll. I just do me. Could it be that you is not always accurate? And you miss out on a lot of things just because you have not come to appreciate that you alone does not make the body. And that's why I says, do not forsake the assembly of one another. Because the Bible says that will be the, you know, the, 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 the manner of some as the day approach, you know, as the, the, the return of Jesus approaches, prophecies are being fulfilled. But the question is, do you want to be part of people that will fulfill funny prophecies? He said, it will be the manner. So whenever I see people that are arguing about, you know, I don't have to come to you, I say, okay, it's, it has been prophesied. So it's okay, I won't argue with you. Somebody must fulfill it. It was not written that Judas must betray Jesus. But it was written that somebody must what? Betray Jesus. But do you have to be Judas? And there are demonic spirits behind some of these conspiracies and theories. May you not yield to a demonic spirit in your generation. Uh, oh, that's a powerful prayer. I said, may you not yield to a demonic spirit in your generation. So impartation speaks of transference. It speaks of uh, conveyance, communication, or bestowing of spiritual gifts, capacities, and what? 
abilities. And it can be from individual to individual. And that individual at times can be God directly. But a lot of times you realize that God conveys his best through humanity. And I'm going to show you from the scriptures how people have been blessed and graced in different generations just because they knew what it takes to receive impartation. Impartation is real. So many people will tell you they are what they are today simply because of what was impacted upon their lives. Impartation is real. And impartation can be achieved through different means. It can, impartation can be communicated through teachings. For example, I'm teaching God's word this morning, right? Do you know the entrance of his word gives light? There's a light component in the logos of God that whenever it's released, it's re, it's released and received, it brings transformation. So a lot of times, impartation is achieved through what? The communication of God's word, which can be through teaching or preaching or even at times counseling, mentoring sessions. Any session in the world is an opportunity to be impacted. Any session in the word of God is what? An opportunity to be impacted. And that's why you go to some meetings and you, re you realize it's like you are hard to. Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 63, he said, the words which I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So words have capacity to carry spiritual substance. Can you write it down? Words have capacity to carry what? Spiritual substance. So when you expose yourself to right words, you are rightly imparted. But words does not just work on God's side, even works. It also works, should I say, on the enemy side. In the negative realm of the spirit, a lot of times, words are used to destroy people's life. Words are spoken from one region and people are affected in the other region. I've heard of, should, should I call it testimony or, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a testimony, of people whose lives were damaged in another continent. From another continent, somebody spoke and they run mad. Words are that powerful. You know, there are things referred to as incantations. <laughs> I don't believe in all that nonsense. Now, listen, thank God for your education. But the realm of the spirit is higher than your mind, mental realm. Whether you believe it or not is real. Words can make you and words can mar you. Words are that powerful. People speak words and lives are transformed. People speak words and lives are destroyed. So impartation does not just happen in the positive realm of the spirit. It also happens in the negative. Words are powerful. So it's not a matter of I believe it or I don't believe it. It's real. We live in a world that is dictated from another realm. There's a realm of the spirit that dictates what happens in this realm. May you not be one of those educated fools. Oh my God. I said, may you not be one of those educated fools who as a result of education has no respect for things of the spirit because I'm a doctor. I went to school. I went to Yale. I went to Harvard and Stanford. I don't care if you went to all of them. The realm of the spirit is higher than the physical and the natural realm. And things can be released from that realm to impact you in this realm. And a lot of times, this is achieved through words. words. He said, the words which I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit and life. So you, a lot of times you see spiritual gifts, spiritual capacities, spiritual abilities and blessings being conferred and bestowed just by words being spoken. And that's why as parents, don't speak over your children in anger. Because God has given you a level of authority because they came through you as a natural, you are the natural source. And that's why I would say, Father, I mean, children, obey or honor your father and your mother, that may be what? Well with you. Because there's a line of authority that you as a parent have 
which gives you the ability to use words to mold their lives. There's a way you constructively and consciously pattern the life of your children by speaking the right words over them. Your child comes around and he says, I'm very bad in math. Don't agree with her or him. Say, no, you are good. I will never forget that experience. Several years ago, I believe my kids were still in elementary school. In fact, now they're in college. It's, I don't know. I don't know how it happened. I slept and I woke up all of a sudden. I realized my son is six, six three. And I'm like, what is happening? What happened? This boy. That's why I love to keep that. If you come to my office, you will see the family picture of when they were little. I love it. <laughs> so when I, I still saw it on Thursday when I was in office and I smiled. But the boy now stood by me and looked at me as if I'm a dog, they dwarf. Imagine. Two years ago, he looked at my wife and I said, why are you people this short? I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> what are powerful. So several years ago, when they were in, when they, when they were in uh, maybe middle school, I'm not even sure whether it's middle or elementary. So my, my daughter came home, and if you know my daughter very well, she's very artistic. So she tends to move towards, you know, those... She loves singing and dancing and... You know, all those things. I don't know where she got it from. It's not for me. Maybe my wife will claim it, but I can't claim it. I was extremely bad in fine arts. You're quiet. <laughs> because you, some, a lot of you are like me. There was nothing fine about fine arts. Where I was concerned. I was, I mean, freestyle. Any weekend they gave us assignments to do over the weekend, that was a weekend of stress for me. Anybody like, like me when you were... I was that bad. So to not have a child that could draw, it was, this is a miracle. I can't understand it. So because of her tendency, you know, she tends not to apply herself when she was younger, maybe especially in the area of math. So one day, she just thought, was talking and said, you know, people, I'm not good in maths and, you know. And my son rose up. He said, it's a lie. You are good in maths. I will never forget that day. I said, how can you, how will you not be good in maths? Daddy is very good in maths. Mom is very good in maths. I'm very good in maths. So why will you not be good in maths? You are good. You know, she did all the talk. He did all the talking for us that we didn't have to say anything. I said, okay. Amen. <laughs> Words are powerful. You know, good for nothing, child. I don't know where you came from. Really? You know, every parent believes they are the best in their generation. I've heard this before about, this actually happened. There, there's this uncle, you know, that is always harassing us, all the nephews and the nieces. And especially those days, you bring out a report sheet. And they will, those days, they used to put it, you came second in a class of 50. Anybody went through a system like that? So it's a major thing. So it's that uncle that would be looking with his glasses and say, oh my God, in a class of 50, you came 13. No, I'm disappointed. When I was your age mates. So it happens that one day they were moving things around in grandpa's house. And a file fell. So one of the boys that has been harassed over and over by this uncle was the one that picked up the file. And, he hoped, and what was manifested and revealed was the report sheets of this particular uncle. And they saw the uncle was extremely good from behind. <laughs> so they saw the they said, this uncle that was always harassing us every time. Look at him. So what am I trying to say? Don't label your children based on what you see now. Label them based on where you want them to go. So you're a good child. You're amazing. You are blessed. You know what you are doing? You are impacting through words. Turn to your name and say, you impact when you speak right words. You know, when you speak God's word over your life, you impact your life. You can impact you. And when you allow people to speak good words, right words, especially people that carry value and power, you are impacted. So what is a major vehicle of communication where impartation is concerned? Don't you ever say your words? Yes. Release, release and receive, and receive. impartation. So impartations are communicated through words. 
But also impartations can be communicated through a ministry called laying on of hands. So we say, oh, we're in 2023. We don't do stuff like that. The Bible will never be ancient. It's a guideline. If hands were laid on Paul, if hands were laid on Timothy, if hands were laid on Barnabas, then you will need hands to be laid on you for you to fulfill certain prophecies. In fact, there's no such thing as an ordination without what? Laying on of hands. You will see the patriarchs of the hold ensuring that they communicate over their offsprings not just through words, by what? The laying on of hands. You know, of course, there are some interesting laying on of hands. You know, the Bible says, lay hands on no man suddenly. Oh, you didn't hear me. Lay hands on no man suddenly. Did anybody ever grow up with hands laid suddenly? <laughs> Severally. Oh, you didn't hear me. Okay. Somebody is waving her hands and she's seated next to her mother. I hope she was not the one laying the hands. <laughs> hands were laid what? Suddenly. Don't you never say there's a ministry of laying on of hands that every parent must have. I say, I lay words on them. There's an age that hands are more effective. Then after a while, words become. Listen, the Bible says wickedness abides in the heart of a child. And with the rod of correction, it shall be chased. Now, the reason, the reason why our country is full of foolish people is because there was not sufficient laying on of hands. So people grew, and as they were growing, their wickedness and foolishness was growing with them. But there's a way you lay hands on a child and it gets the message. I know some of you are like, no, 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 that's child abuse. I was greatly abused and the abuse helped me, if that's the case. <laughs> of course, there's a balance. There's a... There's a time your child does not understand. He understands that ministry. He gets it. I remember when I had my son, I think it was probably barely a year, you know, was living in Skokie then. So he went to, you know, crawling. He was still combining crawling and walking. I'm even in that face. So he went towards this socket and said, Tolu. So he got the message. That means you are not supposed to go there. So he turned back. And you know, there's a way you are backing, but you can still see. So, I was monitoring him. And the boy, 13 months or thereabouts, I don't know who taught him that method. Support. And he was going exactly where he said he should not go. And I watched him. You know, there's such a thing as collecting evidence. <laughs> I did not act. I waited for him to make all the move. He tiptoed and tiptoed, slow motion. And he lay his hands on the socket. And I turned around, caught in the heart. And that was the day it dawned on me that he needed to be inaugurated <laughs> to the ministry of what? Laying on of hands. So I lay hands on him suddenly. And he got the message. And you know, then after a while, it became more of what? Communication of words. But that's not the laying of hands I'm talking about. This is laying on of hands to communicate spiritual substance. 4 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Are you getting blessed this morning? There's a lane on of us to what? Communicate spiritual substance. He said, do not neglect the gift that is in you. So he was talking about a spiritual gift that Timothy had. This was Paul writing to Timothy. He said, don't neglect it. Ask your neighbor, say, do you, are you neglecting your gifts? This might be a message for somebody. There are certain things that God has added to your life, maybe as a teenager, but now you are no longer paying attention to it. And he was telling Timothy, a young man, he said, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy. Prophecy has to do with, you know, words that have the breath of God. He said, words that are spiritual were spoken over your life and they brought those gifts. But it was not just words. He said, it was words with the laying on of what? Hands. Hands were laid on Timothy. What was spoken over Timothy? What's a prophecy? And as a result of that, gift, charisma was imparted.
imparted unto him. I declare in the name of Jesus, every gift that you need to be effective in your generation, you receive it effectively and appropriately by prophecy and laying on of hands in the name of Jesus. So don't neglect it. But the point here is those gifts were communicated because Timothy allowed words to be spoken over him. And he allowed hands to be what? Laid on him. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9 in the Old Testament, it said Joshua, the son of Nun, was full. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9, he said Joshua, the son of Nun, was what? Full. Full of what? The spirit of wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability and the capacity to make the right call. He decided wisely. Why? Because Moses laid hands on him. In 1 Kings, we saw how Solomon was impacted by the spirit of wisdom directly from deity. God showed up and said, what do you want? And he received wisdom that transformed him. But here, we saw how God used man. Turn to him and say, God is still in the business of using men. He used man to release wisdom on Joshua. Through what? The laying on of hands. So it can be from deity to humanity or from humanity to humanity. Spiritual substance, spiritual capacity, spiritual ability communicated through words, through laying on of hands. Hands were laid. For example, you saw the people that I prayed for. That was impartation. I was just going to speak over them, but at some point, I sensed that God will have me also lay hands on them. That's why you should be part of a spiritual church. They are not woke enough. Too, they are not too woke to practice scripture. In this place, we are not woke, we are awake. And you are better off being awake than being woke. It's my truth. I'm not interested in your truth. Your truth can be dangerous. I already have the way, the truth, and the life. I would rather, rather do that one than your truth. All this generational nonsense. <laughs> it's like you are toying with demons. It's my truth. It's my conviction. Your conviction can send you to hell. You will not be judged by your conviction. You'll be judged by his truth. You can believe garbage. Okay, don't let me debate. So we're not, we not that woke. In fact, we're not woke at all. Because we're already awake. Yeah. Don't you ever say, I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake to God. He said, awake unto righteousness and sin not. And we're awake. We're not woke. <laughs> glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. I would, I would rather deal with the truth than trend. You know that things you say, I say, you can do it if it's the real truth. Or if it's just somebody's useless, uh, some useless truth. Don't, please, you say, uh, in fact, put your hands in your pocket. Say, uh, I'm, not, I'm not for that. Because it's not based on the truth of the word of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah one more time. If, if you don't like me, please pretend to like me at this point. To encourage me to finish my message, which I intend to do in the next 10 minutes. Okay, let me round up by talking about what I call essentials of impartation. So if you have not written anything since morning, can you start writing now? I know you are very smart, extremely smart, brilliant. Your mind is photo, is it photogenic or photo, anyway, photo crazy or whatever. Can you just write essentials of impartation? When? Impartation are centered around revelations. Impartations are centered around what? Revelation. Thank God for education. You know, on Friday, I still talked about why the relevance of education. But what imparts primarily is revelation. 
There's, there's a way the Spirit of God opens up your mind to see the will of God. And in that revelation, there's always light. And it's that light that develops. In him was life, and this life was the light of men. And this light shines, and darkness comprehends not. So if it's impartation, there must be a, a, a revelation base. The Bible says in Psalm 19 and verse 130, it said the entrance of his word gives light. Light. Somebody shout light. Light. Be. There's an illumination that precedes every impartation. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6, it says for God who commanded light to shine out of darkness as shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Can you see it? He commanded light to shine out of darkness. He said he has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge. So every revelation of God has light. The light of the knowledge. So the, one of the ways you know this knowledge is of God is it carries light. It illuminates the light of the knowledge. If it's knowledge of God, there's light there. The entrance of his word, this word, light. So for it to impact, it must be revelation because it's only revelation that has that kind of light effect that transforms. Two, your sensitivity to the ministry of the Holy Spirit is key to your impartation. In fact, what we call impartation is administration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the person behind impartation. It's not just a force. It's a person. Jesus said, I will pray the Father that he may send unto you another comforter. He's the one administering impartation. Even under the old covenant, before he moved here permanently, every impartation went through him. There was nobody that was impacted by God without the involvement of the Holy Spirit. Whether he came directly from God or he came through men, the Holy Spirit was still involved. So there must be a sensitivity, an acknowledgement of each person to enjoy that impartation. It's real. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, And you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So until he comes, there's no power. Gifts, capacities, abilities are released through his person. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Let him do what he has been sent to do. He wants to empower your life. Acknowledge him, allow him. And every time you spend time in the world, you are feeding that process of his walking. The spirit loves the world. When you spend time with us, other believers, the spirit loves it. He moves. He needs such environment. The ministry of the spirit is important. You must know, first of all, that he's in you. He's the one that works in you, both to will and to do. And he's the one that will help your life to be, you know, to be powerful. He's the one that empowers you. There's no impartation without him. So you must recognize him. You must be sensitive to him. You must cooperate with his leadings. He prompts you. Somebody say, but, but you know, pastor talks about being led of God every time, but he does not speak to me. The reason why he seems he does not speak to you is because you don't spend enough time in fellowship. Now, I don't care how many hundreds of people are in a room. If my wife speaks, guess what? I will know. My wife has just spoken. Because I've known her for almost 30 years. This September will make it 29. September 1st will make it 29 years that I proposed to her. So, you know, we've been in each other's space that long. Even my children, I mean, my son is over 20 now. I've just been two decades. Their voice, there are millions of voices on that. But his voice, our voice stands out. It was not like I went to school to learn it. It came just by being around them. God does not speak. It's because you don't create enough time 
to fellowship with him. You know, the leading of God does not have to be spectacular. Oh my God, there was this hollow voice. All of, I was shaking the horse. It might be a demon. God wants his leading to be so natural. You know, it should be so natural that you just know this is what he wants me to do. And it comes through fellowship, koinonia. Don't you never say the Holy Spirit must be real to you through fellowship to enjoy his impartation adequately. Is that very clear? The third essential is what I call understanding that grace is transferred and received through faith. You know, all these things we're talking about, the abilities, the capacities, the gifts. If there's a word that brings all of these things together is the word grace. They are all gifts of grace. And when you hear grace, the next thing that comes to mind is you cannot earn it. And if you cannot earn it, then you must receive it by faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verse 16, it says it is of faith that it might be by what? Grace. Romans chapter 5 verse 2 says, it says it's by faith you have access into this grace. So if impartation is dealing with gifts of grace, then it's going to take faith to receive it. Since I can't harm it, I don't get it because I've been around just by doing that. Beyond, in fact, the first factor where receiving anything that is connected to grace is concerned is faith. So you must learn how to receive by faith. Somebody say, I receive freely, I receive freely. By, faith. by faith. You don't have it, you receive it by faith. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you need to hear God to have faith to receive. And you see, it's still connected to fellowship. So there is no such thing as impartation outside of fellowship because it's in the place of fellowship that you hear that word that activates faith to receive grace. Lift up your trust and shout, I receive grace. Come on, shall we say, I receive grace. You know, John chapter 1 verse 12 says, he came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as what? Receive, he gave the power. So the impartation is as a result of what? Receiving. Verse 16 of John chapter 1 says, Of his fullness we have what all received. Grace for grace. Four. Wow, are you being blessed this morning? Ministry gifts are primary carriers of gifts, capacities, and abilities of God. So what do I mean by ministry gifts? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 says, The same one that ascended, Gave gifts unto men. Talking about Jesus. So Jesus ascended and gave what? He gave gifts unto men. Some as apostles, some as prophets, some as teachers. That's not the scripture I'm talking about, me there. <laughs> I'm saying Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. He gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men. Some as pastors and teachers. So men carry the impartation you need. And the way you treat those men will determine whether or not you receive what they carry for you. Don't you never say neighbor? Thank God for deity. But thank God for humanity too. Because pastors, prophets, teachers, you know, you know all these small boys calling themselves pastors that you say you should call them daddy, you know. A friend of mine, in fact, I need to call him, put something on Instagram a few weeks ago. He was addressing the fact that, you know, how some pastors, they feel because they are anointed and men of God, even their mates in high school cannot call them by first name, which I agree. Don't let the gift of God get into your head. In fact, you are supposed to be humble because you received it freely. You didn't pay for it. So you should treat everybody with respect. You say, oh, they insist that everybody has to call them daddy or whatever. Uh, uh. So he's put that. 
And come and say, oh, manner of comment. Yes! Somebody say, oh, tell the rest of your colleagues. They need to hear this. This and gentlemen. 90% of that comment came from fools. There were people who were already established in rebellion. Who were just looking for opportunity to experience, to express their extra foolishness. Listen, honor is a major kingdom code. You cannot receive grace from men if you cannot honor them. My pastor is just like me. He's just like you. But God placed him in your life. And there's a position of humility and honor that helps you to receive from him. You know, Jesus, as powerful, as anointed, as graced as he was, came to his people in Mark chapter 6 from verse 1 to 6. And none of them, or only a few of them, were healed. Why? They would not honor him. Because he was the carpenter boy they grew up with. Is he not Mary's boy, the carpenter? And the Bible says Jesus could not heal them. He wanted to. But there's a position in honor that helps you to receive. The, the reason why gifts or giving is so important is because of the honor it carries. Because gift is supposed to be done in honor. If that gifting or giving, you call it, is not done in honor, you can as well not do it. In Genesis 27 verse 4, Isaac insisted that his son should go and make him savory food so that his soul could bless him. Was it because he could not afford it? He was a rich man. But they say giving that communicates honor. People have given me $30. And to the glory of God, $30 cannot change my life now. And that $30 felt like $30 million Because I knew it came from a place of honor. And there's a blessing. There's, a, there's an impartation gradient created through honor. Don't you know say honor? Honor. We we'll never be ancient, dated, outdated, where the kingdom of God is concerned. Honor is key. If God has blessed somebody and that person has the capacity to impact you, you must honor to get it. You can even call somebody that they are not honoring. So it's more than the title, it's a hard thing. And of course, service. The Bible says in Matthew, is it 25, verse 21 now? He said, if you are faithful in that which is little, there's a heart of service that helps you to draw the anointing. In 2 Kings chapter 2, there's a story told of how Elisha or Elijah was about to be taken away from Elijah. So they went from Giga to Bethel, from Bethel to Jericho, from Jericho to Jordan. And you know what? Elisha followed all the way. There were sons of the prophet that were prophesying. Your, your, your master is about to be taken. And none of them got what was on Elijah. But there was an Elisha to follow. Don't you ever say neighbor? Are you a good follower? Because there's impartation. True followership. Rise up everybody. There's impartation through followership. There's impartation through service. Service that is from the heart. No high service. There's a God that sees your heart. And because you are faithful, you are imparted. I hope I've been able to help somebody today. Come on, did you, hear, did you receive anything from God? So impartation is real. And man, greatness is a product of what? Impartation. Now, don't you never say greatness? Is a, is a product of impartation. You need impartation. Say loud and clear. Say you need impartation to manifest your potential and fulfill your prophecy. Come on, give God a shout of praise.